So I've been sitting here for a while with uh, Road Warrior Animal, and uh, we get a knock at the door, and really it was leading to my next question. I've heard a lot about these guys, the War Kings, and I've, I've spent a little bit of time on Twitter. I spent some time on Facebook, and I've uh, been watching at what they're doing. Tell me the story of how these guys came aboard to uh, be the next generation of uh, uh, War Kings and taking the baton that you've been running with for over 20 years and, and how you met them and what you saw in them that you thought that they were worthy to, to bring under your belt. Well, Crimson owns a company in uh, Clarksville, Tennessee called Tried and True Processing, right? So went down to work for Crimson and we did a couple little things in a ring and, and I, I saw these guys and you know there's always something like I was talking to you about before you know there's very you don't even have to tell people that there's an it factor with things you just know the it factor is there yep. and when uh, I stepped in the ring with these guys and just the reaction we got in the ring there together I told Crimson I think at first I said this shit's gonna work good this shit's awesome and the, the more that we have been together in the ring, the reaction and the unification becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. You know, I mean, listen, Jax is not gonna be Crimson, Crimson's not gonna be Jax, they're not gonna be the Road Warriors, but you know what? They could be the best version of what the Road Warrior mentality can be together as a threesome unit, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and that's what we're striving for. You know, we want to have these guys, I want these guys to have their own identity, but then again, have a similar identity and the respect that Hawk and I had in this business. Like I told you before, there's weasels and there's weasel slappers, one of Hawk's famous lines. Well, you know what? <laughs> You're looking at weasel slappers right here because you got to kick ass and take names in this business. And then unless you do, you're never going to get any respect. Well, we're sitting here with uh, Jax Dane and Crimson <coughs> of the War Kings. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Pleasure to be here. Now, you guys, we just had a little brief with uh, Road Warrior Animal, and uh, you guys popped in serendipitously at the perfect timing. We were wrapping up that interview, and it was good to see all three of you together, and uh, that was really cool. Now, tell me, Tell me a little bit about how you met uh, Joe and uh, and how what Joe saw on you or what you guys saw on Joe that you guys decided, hey, you know what, we can work together and make this work. I mean, certainly you have the in the ring moves, you have the look, you have the build uh, and you have the promo skills. Um, but it's not for me to tell your story. Take me to that to that moment. And let's start there and, and bring me forward. And then we'll circle back a little bit on your kind of your early childhood and that time that you got, that moment that you got interested in wrestling and said, you know what, I'm going to make a career in this and, and I'm going to be somebody. Um, so the, like, uh, like Road Warrior Animal said, uh, he, we, we worked together at my promotion in Clarksville, Tennessee. It's right outside of Nashville. I've been running events since 2015. Uh, I actually started running events when I, uh, I had uh, pec surgery. I tore my pec major right off the front of my shoulder, and I was down and out for a little bit, and was given an opportunity to run a live event in Clarksville, Tennessee. and. Uh, the first event we drew 800 pe people on a Sunday. I think it was Labor Day weekend, and that that gave me a, you know, the idea. Okay, well, this this we were onto something here. I want to keep keep going. There. Just 800. Yeah, yeah. just 800. Uh, for, <laughs> for an independent show, yeah. you know, that's that's pretty good. That's um, huge. That's, that's really good for an independent show. He's being uh, relatively modest. He likes to do that about tried and true pro. So yeah. I try to be the more of the voice for that, so he doesn't have to be. But tried and true pro is. is is by far uh, the most successful independent promotion in the South. 
uh, maybe uh, probably could put it in the top three or four in the country as far as independent promotions when you get away from the WWE, Ring of Honor, Impact, AEW. Once you, you're not throwing those names around, tried and true is as, as good as it gets. I mean, production, talent, uh, matches, behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, support system, they pretty much orchestrated some of the bigger successful events in Nashville that they won't get credit for, but um, you know the the NWA 70 event was was all tried and true's infrastructure. Uh, the pop up event for NWA in Clarksville was all tried and true's infrastructure. Without tried and true, neither of those events happened. So um, you know he's not going to beat his chest or get the credit he deserves for it. But but I'm not scared to do that because I'm proud of him. I mean I think it's um, it's an, he has an exceptional ability to to run a wrestling business aside from being a professional wrestler so if he's not going to toot his horn I will I'm not I'm not shy to do that for him because he, he deserves a recognition uh, for some of the successful events that's happened in the past year and and um, I, I want to make sure people understand how how important he was to making sure those events come off without him they don't happen plain and simple and so the the event Road Warrior was in the audience and saw you guys perform. No, 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 so, no. We um, so we brought we brought Animal in yeah. uh, as as just you know for an appearance, an attraction, and and he's an, he's an attraction. He's a legend. We've me and Jax grew up watching him and Hawk and the Road Warriors kick ass you know every weekend. <laughs> Absolutely, and, and they've been a huge inspiration on just our wrestling. Um, the way we look at wrestling, the way we present ourselves in the wrestling ring and, and everything like that. So, you know, we just wanted to have him as a part of our, our event and, and we brought him in and, you know, he was, like he said himself, he, he really liked what we were doing with Tried and True. And once we, we all three of us were in the ring uh, for a photo opportunity, uh, he, he felt it, we all felt it and, and he watched our match and he saw something in us and we talked about it. We kept in touch ever since that event and we, we, we said, you know what, let's, he, he, he wanted to do it. He wanted to manage us. He, he saw something in us and, and me and Jax obviously jumped at the opportunity to have him as, a, as our mentor. Yeah, man, I mean, as a kid, like Crimson said, growing up, we, uh, I, I think everybody loves the Road Warriors, right? I mean, everybody wants to be, everybody wants to paint your face, everybody wants to wear the spikes. I mean, that's a dream come true, but just out of respect for, for the business and the legends, you don't do that. Um, you, you don't try to emulate that, especially on the level Crimson and I want to emulate it on without their blessing, right? I mean, you don't step on their toes. You don't take something that's there, something that they made famous. You don't do that uh, w without th their blessing. So, uh, Road Warrior Animal was in, man, and we. He, he climbed in the ring with us, which was outstanding. And I, I remember plain as day, he looked at me at the end of that event or in the end of that match, and he said, um, "You guys ever thought about painting your face?" <laughs> well, hell yeah, we think about painting their face. We we think about wearing spikes, but we you, you don't do that. That's just you don't steal somebody's shit like that uh, without their blessing. So when he said, hey, man, you guys ever think of painting your face? Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. But to tell you what would mean more to us if you painted our face for us. And he was he was absolutely for it and on board. And um, having him in your corner, man, that's a uh, for for 10 year old Jax, man, that's a that's a dream come true. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean, to to want to emulate that guy and wear the spikes and, and the pads and, and face paint and have him give you his blessing, not just go out and arbitrarily do it without um, touching base with him, man, that's, um, mm -hmm. that's, a, that, that's a special feeling. Uh, take me back to 10-year-old Jax and, you know, that early influence into wrestling. And, and what, what got you interested, Jax and, and Crimson? What got you interested in wrestling early in your life? <laughs> like every kid in the in the 80s, late 80s and early 90s, man, you you wrestling was huge. I mean, you had Hogan, you had Bundy, you had the Road Warriors, you had Flair, you had Nikita Koloff. I mean, you go down the list, right, of all these guys that were that were larger than life, and um, you just gravitate towards wanting to be that. And for me, I was a really small kid, man. I mean, when I got into high school, I was five feet tall and I weighed 90 pounds so I was bullied a lot elementary school junior high Wouldn't believe it. Um, so now you know I try to 
to walk around with a larger than life appeal and 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 really put forward a message that that you don't have to be an asshole uh, if you are this way. So just as a kid, man, growing up, I mean, we all loved wrestling. You know I mean, when I was a kid, you loved the Dukes of Hazard and you loved wrestling. That's what you loved. Uh, I mean, me too. That's why I'm interviewing you. When was the moment you knew that you wanted to be a wrestler? Um, wow. I don't, I don't think for me it didn't come until my adult life, man. I played basketball in college. I always wanted to be a professional basketball player. That's, that's what I loved. Um, then I realized that that wasn't going to happen. Uh, for, I mean, that's, a, that's something you got to be really, really talented at, and I just I wasn't a professional-level player. Uh, and I, I got a corporate job right out of college after I got my degree and had a miserable day at work. My roommate in college, his dad was at one time the, the head cameraman for the WWE. And he had told me that if I ever wanted to try professional wrestling, to give him a buzz. And I called him that day. Two weeks later, I was meeting with Dr. Tom Pritchard in Louisville, Kentucky. And um, four weeks later, I was living in Louisville, Kentucky, training with Rip Rogers to be a pro wrestler. At what age was that? Uh, 24, 25. Mm -hmm. Crimson, what about yourself? Take me back to your early childhood memories of uh, 10, 11, to. 12, 15, what was your early inspiration? Um, always been a fan since yeah. I was a kid. My earliest memories were being in front of the TV, just, just watching wrestling, watching these larger than life characters jump out of the screen. Hulk Hogan, always been a favorite of mine since I was a kid, because yeah. he, was the, he was the hero um, <clears throat> that would come in representing, you know, everything that was good and telling me to say my prayers, take my vitamins, train hard, and that I could accomplish anything. And as a young kid, especially a young kid like I was with real no, really no, no guidance, uh, didn't really have a, f a father figure in the picture, like that was, that was where I kind of latched on to, to wrestling is, is to get me, you know, to kind of find something to entertain me, one, and, and I guess shape myself as a, as, a, as a kid and where I was going, my direction or whatever. And um, always been a fan, always been a fan of wrestling. Uh, ever gr growing up, I, right out of high school, I joined the, joined the Army. And uh, five years, uh, I spent five years in the Army, stationed at Fort Campbell with the 101st Airborne Division, two combat tours to Iraq. And it was on that second tour in Iraq where uh, I was really, trying to figure out what my next step was because it wasn't going to be a lifelong career in the Army. It was going to be transition out when I got back from Iraq, go back to school to finish my degree. And I didn't really know what else. And a couple of buddies of mine that I was deployed with, we would get on Amazon and get wrestling DVD shipped over to us. We watched it on our downtime. And one of, them, one of my buddies just suggested one time, hey, you know, you should try this out. You're a big fan. You're, you love wrestling. You're an athletic guy. You're 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 a big guy. Uh, I think this would be great for you. And you know, we kind of tossed around the idea, laughed about it a little bit, and I and, and we started looking into it because, quite honestly, I didn't know how to become a pro wrestler. Uh, back then, you just weren't really there wasn't ads in the paper, at least yeah. that I saw, you know, yeah. or online, yeah. or anything. So it was like we got on Google and and kind of did some research and figured out that there was all kinds of wrestling schools around the nation and. When I got back from Iraq, I found a local promotion in Nashville. It was actually an NWA affiliate in Nashville at the time, and showed up at their doorstep, and they brought me in and trained me. So that's that's kind of how I got into pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so your early uh, influences, both you guys, very similar to mine, and and that's again why I'm doing this channel. And then. It looks like you guys had a, both a very similar path. Uh, I'm looking at your stuff here, uh, Crimson. Uh, you know your early career, going into uh, TNA, mm -hmm. uh, later going into the Ohio Valley Wrestling, and then uh, coming back to Impact Wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I look at uh, Jacks over here, I see a lot of the same stuff. I see uh, I see Iron Gods. I see the Championship Success, Ring of Honor. Impact, Ohio Valley Wrestling. Um, when did you guys meet each other? <laughs> that's a that's a funny story, man. I mean, it's it, it, we kind of laugh about it now because. 
Uh, I was living in Texas. Crimson was living in Tennessee. I grew up in Tennessee. I was from Tennessee. I was paying attention closely to, to what was happening with the tried and true events because, I mean, you pay attention to what goes on in your backyard, even though you don't live there anymore. And, and I was living out in Texas. Uh, so I, I knew who Crimson was. I was actually a fan of him when he had his first run at, at TNA Impact. He was um, one of the reasons that I'd actually watched the show because uh, I liked what they, they, even though they weren't sure what they were doing with him, I liked what they were doing with him. I mean, he, he was getting big wins and he was he was a new fresh face with a, a well built and, and um, um, big guy, so he was what I liked in wrestling, right? And yeah. there wasn't a lot like him at that point, and they were giving him wins over over some pretty well-known guys. So I was I was kind of following along. I mean, you don't want to say with a with a tinge of, of jealousy because that's not what it was, but just a wow, that's a great spot to be in. Uh, wonder what I could do in that spot, or let's just see what he does in that spot. And obviously, he was super successful with that right up to the point where he got injured. Um, but we didn't know each other. I didn't know him. I'd never spoken to him. I'd never, I never talked to him. And um, um, probably had a little bit of a, we laugh about it now, a misconception of, of who he was as a person and um, just kind of the way he carried himself in the ring. That, that happens a lot, though, in this business because you... You take a guy's persona in the ring and you automatically associate it to with maybe that's what he's like outside of the ring. Yeah. And that's not fair to any any of us, really. But um, I did that to him. So it's like these two mega ultra alpha males, right? And he's in my backyard and he's not calling me to be a part of his event. So I automatically think, well, you know, it's just not a good mix. And then my phone rang one day and it was, uh, well, no, my phone didn't ring. My, I got a message on Twitter, private DM on Twitter. And it said, hey, um, you ever been in the military? From Crimson. I was like, no, never been in the military. Have a good day. <laughs> Two days later, Abyss calls and says, hey, we, we need a, you to play a role as a military guy. So I immediately reached out to Crimson by phone because I was extremely uncomfortable with portraying myself as a member of the military, not having been a member of the military. I mean, that really, we can't put into words how much I struggled with that. And um, he really helped me through that process. But that's how we met, man. TNA or Impact, they needed a guy to fill a role for, for what he was doing. I fit the mold. He was on board with it. And that's how we met. We actually physically met 12 hours before they put us on TV together as a team, which is kind of unheard of in this this industry, right? I mean, no no backstory together, no history together. Hell, we didn't even know each other. And the next thing you know, we're on national TV trying to make it work. So that's how we met, man. I mean, he, he needed somebody to fill a role, and, and I was fortunate enough to, to be the guy that, that um, stepped in. Yeah, I actually saw this pictures on Facebook because I was putting together some of the promo flyers. And... Um, was a very limited amount of of stuff on what with you guys together as War Kings, but I saw a lot of that uh, army gear uh, yeah. that you guys yeah. were, you know uh, wearing and all that. And I, I was thinking, uh, who are these guys, and and you know, uh, where's their face paint at? Um, <laughs> uh, Jax, tell me a little bit about your time. Um, I see here wrestling against uh, Scott Steiner. I see uh, Iron Gods 2013 to 2014. Tell me a little bit about that. About well, uh, I mean, I, I have been, I have been one of the most fortunate professional wrestlers in the world when it comes to tag team wrestling and, and who I've been partnered with. Uh, my first tag team partner was Ray Rowe, who is now part of the War Raiders, War Machine um, on WWE on Raw. He was my first partner, so oh, I got really lucky there. And then I was paired with um, Rob Conway uh, as the Iron Gods, former WWE uh, World Tag Team Champ and former NWA World Champ and, and so on. So I had him as a partner. And then now I'm wrestling with Crimson. So I mean, I really can't express to you how lucky I've been with, with tag team partners. Guys don't get as lucky as I've gotten in my career to have great partners. Uh, but the Iron Gods was fun, man. We were NWA World Tag Team Champions. We, we got to wrestle in Japan for New Japan like Animal was talking about earlier. Um, 
wrestled Kojima, Tenzin, Hoyt, Okada, Tanahashi, you name it. We we got to bounce around with those guys. So that was a fun time for me. Um, right after that, I won the NWA world title. I uh, was the NWA world champ after that. So, um, you know, I've been pretty fortunate. Take, take me back to that match where you became the NWA world champ. Take me back to the match, the preparation, the feeling in the ring, and take me back to that moment where you first held the belt above your head. Oh man, that was cool. And it was cool for a handful of reasons, man. I, I, I actually was able to win the NWA world title from um, Tenzan, the violent bull from New Japan. He was the NWA world champion. He had beat uh, Rob Conway for the title uh, over in Japan. He had defended it several times and then came to America for a tour, tour and I wrestled him in San Antonio. Uh, but it was cool for a lot of reasons, man. I have a lot of history with Tenzan. Uh, he was a close personal friend uh, now that we're, we're through bouncing around each other in the ring. But what made it cool that night, man, on top of winning the world title was Scott Norton was there. And I've always been a big fan of Scott Norton. And him and uh, Tenzan are great friends from his time in New Japan as well. So Scott was in the crowd, uh, was part of that night when I, when I won the NWA world title. So just a lot of parameters there, man, that made it a cool cool night and then obviously you know, for me winning the NWA world title that's if you look at the guys that have held that that's that's pretty special I mean you got the flair uh, I mean you you can go down the list I don't have to name them Harley Race I mean more modern guys that are real important to me Adam Pierce AJ Styles uh, you know it, it's kind of funny man uh, it's you know they there's kind of a, a I don't want to say negative vibe, but people talk about the Tharp era of the NWA, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, man. I would put Tharp's four NWA world champions, Kojima, Tenzan, Conway, and myself, um, resumes against anybody that's ever held that title, man. Kojima, Tenzan, and Conway are all world-class guys. I'm bringing up the, the rear on that. but So, I mean, the NWA was, was successful during that time span as well, and I'm, I'm glad I got an opportunity to, to represent the group. Excuse me, the brand is the world champ. Mm -hmm. uh, Crimson, also you wrestled with NWA seemingly a little bit uh, before the time that Jax was with them. Tell me a little bit about your experience with the NWA. Yeah, the NWA, when I was wrestling for them early on in like 2010, wasn't really, wasn't really the NWA of the past uh, in its prime, and it wasn't, surely wasn't the NWA that we uh, have in, in this modern day, in this modern time in which Billy Corgan owns and is doing some uh, great things with. It was a time where there was a ton of NWA affiliates all across the nation, all across the world. Um, and I don't think they were too heavily, uh, I don't know, moderated or uh, followed or tracked or, or however that looked. But either way, there was, a, there was a select few of NWA promotions out there, one being in Nashville. Uh, out and then uh, in Texas, where he's he's he was out of at the time, and there's a few others around around the nation that 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 did it right, and that that you could follow, you could watch. They had their product on a platform which you could you could see digitally, and they were doing good stuff. So I was fortunate to wrestle for uh, NWA main event out of Nashville for a while. I held the NWA Mid American Television Championship, and uh, actually was the last person to hold that title before it got. I guess retired or however, whatever they do nowadays, but it's no longer active and I was the last person to hold it. So it was good. It was the original promotion that trained me out of Nashville. And uh, you know, it, uh, but I'll be honest, there wasn't, it was a local promotion overall. Yeah. You know, that we didn't, there wasn't, there wasn't, it wasn't real territories like it was previously in you know the 80s, 70s, you know, where guys, the champion traveled all around. Uh, there was a bunch of affiliates in different parts of the country that were just doing their own thing for the most part until actually Tharp took over and tried to kind of um, bring it back to where it was today and he had the right idea and uh, I, you know I just don't know how that support system looked for him but he was on the right track I feel and um, you know nowadays Billy Corgan owns the company and we are still heavily associated with NWA today and we just wrestled in their Crockett Cup. They they brought back the NWA uh, Crockett Cup Tag Team Tournament, and that was something special for us to Absolutely. be a part of. And you know, it's a company with with great history, 
tradition, lineage. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, when you think of NWA, you think of Ric Flair, world champion, yeah, just absolutely. world class athletes. And uh, it's been a great honor to just to, to be working with them or under the NWA banner for all these years. And to expand on that a little bit, man, the Crockett Cup is where you really get to put your arms around a little bit of the history of the NWA. I mean, because they, you know, Koloff was there, Stan Lane was there, Bobby yeah. Eaton. I mean, yeah. so you got yeah. you got to, to actually reach out and touch these guys that you, you, you know, you grew up watching and loving. And, and the feel that night, um, they did a really good job, NWA and, and Ring of Honor, of of creating almost an 80s feel that night. Yeah. The way the oh, ring was awesome. set up, the, the walkout, the banners, the, the crowd. I mean, it was just, that, that night was a really, really cool night, man. The the Crockett Cup over in North Carolina. It just, it, it made you feel like you went back in time. I mean, it really did. It, it, it was an honor to be a part of that, man. Uh, what night was that? What year? Oh, uh, that was this year. Yeah, this year. This year? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Crimson, take me back to, um, when you defeated uh, Matt Boyce and you, you won the NWA Mid-American Television Championship. Take me back to the preparation. Take me back to how it felt to, uh, to have that title belt. And uh, take me back to that night. Tell me a little bit about that match. It was my first championship that I had won That's awesome. since starting starting that that career path in pro wrestling so it meant a lot and it was it was a title that was recognized you know worldwide for a bit of time and you know as far as preparation goes at the time I was just I was fairly new in the wrestling industry wrestling business I was a personal trainer on the side and I was always in the gym I was always training and I was just starting out and and but my head was on straight and I was I had a goal you know, I, 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 as much as great of an experience as that was and an awesome moment it was to win that title, it's always been about what's next for me. Right. You know what I mean? That, yeah. so, so as yeah. great as that a moment that was, as that was, it was just like, okay, this is, this is just the beginning. Like, I want more, I want more, I want to do more, I want to see more, I want more titles. I want, I want to be the best. And it was, uh, it was, it was a really, a really awesome moment to be able to carry that title and actually be the last one to hold it. So, was Matt that Boyce was a good competitor. He was a great wrestler out of uh, Arkansas, mm -hmm. and he was somebody that that local NWA promotion at the mm -hmm. time out of Nashville was really behind. So I had a good, good, uh, good feud for a while with him, and and he always brought the best out of me because he had been wrestling for years at the time, and I, like I said, I was just pretty, pretty new. Uh, I mean, we're talking, we're talking less than a year. And yeah. Didn't know what you didn't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that had to be great validation. Like, hey, I'm on the right path. Hey, I found something that uh, I'm good at or I'm passionate about, and I'm being recognized for it. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, definitely felt good. I mean, that's always a sign of uh, somebody believing in you. There you go. Somebody trusting you as a representation of their brand and a flag bearer of that promotion or company. So right. that told me that at the very least, you know, they trusted me as almost the face, one of the, the faces that, that represents that brand. So it was really cool to, to, to have that so, so early on in my career, is that someone believing in me and, and, and trusting me with that opportunity and that responsibility. What age were you at that time? Uh, probably 23, mm -hmm. 24 maybe. What do you do to celebrate? I don't know if I could talk about that on camera. <laughs> you, can, you can abbreviate or edit. Uh, we can move forward. <laughs> no, man, I went down Broadway and, and, and partied, man. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if you've ever partied on Broadway in Nashville, but it's a good time. No. Uh, uh, you ought to check it out. Yeah. It's yeah. Honky Tonk's uh, uh -huh. greatest bars out there. Uh-huh great live music but that's what we did you know we went down the road and had some drinks and, and really celebrated and mm -hmm. talked about had some shots and talked about what the future holds like this is just the beginning at that moment what did you set for your next goal I see a couple of your accomplishments but what did you personally set for hey this is what I've done next up uh, did you have a, a specific goal or a generalized I want to keep climbing I mean, generalized for the most part, I knew uh, essentially I wanted to be at the pinnacle of pro wrestling, which is WWE. 
Yeah. You know, where everyone I think gets into wrestling, well, maybe not so much nowadays because there's, I mean, there's so many platforms for good wrestling right now. You don't really, there's so many places you can go make a good living and have a good career at that are, that are beyond, you know, that, that aren't WWE, but I mean, I still feel that that's that's everyone's main goal. Yeah, be at, yeah um, man. Be at WrestleMania, I mean. and, and that that was my goal. That was that was it. You know, that I loved wrestling at some of these local promotions and and you know getting that experience. But at the end of the day, it's repetition. It's reps that were getting me closer to what was what at the time was the uh, ultimate goal was being at the pinnacle. And um, how did you transition into the TNA in 2010? Tell me about that. Uh, well, um, I was at an independent wrestling event in Nashville, and Terry Taylor, who uh, was talent relations for TNA at the time, was at that event looking at somebody. Actually, I believe he was there to see Matt Boyce, and I was double shotting that night, meaning I had two bookings that night relatively close together so I could do both. I wrestled somewhere else, and then I, I went down to that event where Terry was at. And as soon as I got there, my music was basically playing and I had to go straight to the ring, but I was already dressed from in, in my gear. And um, as, as soon as I got to the back, Terry, Terry Taylor came to the back. I didn't know he was gonna be there, but he came to the back and asked me uh, what my name was and a little bit about me and got to talking a little bit and exchanged, he, he exchanged uh, information and, uh, and he gave me his number and told me to call him. And that was, you know, that was, motivation for me right there just that he took time out of his day to to come talk to me you know and i don't know what he specifically saw but you know he he saw something and that meant a lot to me at that time being so young in the in the business that he gave me his number trusted me with his number his contact information and yep. told me to reach out to him yep. that i wouldn't be a bother just reach out to him so i stayed in contact with him consistently for the next few months until I, I got a, a tryout with TNA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that had to feel good. I mean, uh, I've watched TNA many nights on TV and uh, I've seen some big names. I've seen some great action. Um, oh yeah. In fact, TNA, uh, total nonstop action, I believe that's what they stand for. Yes. Uh, brought the action when WWE started lulling a little bit, in my opinion. Um, Tell me a little bit about wrestling with Scott Steiner in the pay-per-view event for the um, was it steel cage match? Mm, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. You wrestled Steiner in a cage? No, we were. Oh, okay. I tagged with Steiner for a bit. So um, I think it was lockdown, one of the lockdown pay-per-views in Cincinnati that we were a, a tag team. For. That, that tag team didn't last long, but it was it was great to uh, <laughs> be able to be in the ring with Scott Steiner and to get advice from him <laughs> and just you know so young in into the wrestling business be around somebody like that who's been everywhere, done everything, and has a wealth of knowledge to pass on to the younger mm -hmm. generation. Man, I was really fortunate to be in that situation. Uh, it was it was cool to be in. I mean, it was surreal. You know, at the time though, it's like you're not thinking about all that. Yeah. It's not till honestly quite recently to where I can actually pump the brakes a little bit and kind of look back at my career actually sitting down with my son who's seven years old and a huge wrestling fan who idolizes what his dad does and you know wants to be a wrestler and mm -hmm. you know it's it's now that I'm actually looking back on all this stuff and being like wow you know how fortunate how lucky I was and you know it meant a lot at the time but it just means so much more now well it's a whirlwind when you're in it yeah I mean when, when you're living it it's just it's just what's happening yeah, you know it's not up. yeah man yeah. you don't don't get left behind so you it's not until like you said until you get into a position where uh, you time slows down and you can look back and say oh, hmm, I was able to accomplish quite a bit you know so far so who did you train under Crimson? When I first started? Yes. A guy named Jeff Daniels out of Nashville. He was booking NWA out of Nashville at the time. And uh, Jeff Daniels is a, is a name that you, you know, you, you, it, by hearing it, you wouldn't really, you know, know probably who, who that is unless you're a huge wrestling fan, especially of the Southern, you know, area. But he's a, he's a great veteran. He, he came in right, I guess, at the tail end of the territory days. Um, 
but he he worked for all the major promotions. You know, you can get on the WWE Network now and watch some old WCW Saturday nights. You'll see him yeah. wrestling all the stars there. You can watch him on some early WWF um, events where he's he's wrestling some major stars there. And yeah. you know, he he's been everywhere and done everything. And he was really just. I got really lucky to be able to train under him. He's one of those guys, man, I think you could explain it. Um, the casual fan may not know exactly who he is, yeah. um, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, yeah. but anybody in our region that wrestled knows exactly who he is because of how well he's respected and, and how good of a teacher he is and, and what he's been able to help a lot of guys accomplish. Some guys never get the credit for um, helping guys accomplish things, yeah. and he's he's one of those guys. So the casual fan may not exactly know who he is, but man, everybody that's put on boots in in the South will know who oh, yeah. who he is and what he's capable of, and 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 how good he is. And and yourself, Jax, who trained you early on? Oh man, I got really lucky. Uh, my first <laughs> my first trainer was Rip Rogers, mm -hmm. uh, Ohio Valley Wrestling. Uh, Rip Rogers, Nick Dinsmore, and and Rob Conway were the three guys that really, really. Um, trained me in my early career uh, more Nick and and rip early on um, uh, you know teaching me the ins and outs of, of the ring and inside the ring and and then I got paired with Conway fairly early as as a tag team wrestler and being able to tour Japan and and the United States with him as a tag team partner that's a training in itself kind of similar to what Crimson said being paired with Steiner um sometimes you get paired with guys that are really really good and know what they're doing and and I was fortunate to be able to do that not only was he able to to teach me wrestling stuff like the the normal ins and outs but but the behind the scenes stuff the locker room stuff that you know you you learn along the way how to treat people what to say what not to say what to do what not to do i mean i was i was in a position really early on where where he really took me under his wing and that stuff and mm -hmm. and i'm grateful for that yeah it, it helps to be trained by um somebody who believes in you you know, and somebody who sees something good in you, and somebody who has something to offer uh, and pass that knowledge down. Well, and it's crazy now, man, because so many, I mean, like Crimson said, 10, 12 years ago, it was 15 years ago, it was hard to find a wrestling training school, yeah. right? I mean, it was, yeah. it was in you, you, not everybody was a trainer, yeah. and not everybody was a professional wrestler, but now with social media, I mean, hell, you, there's wrestling schools everywhere. Yeah. And, um, you know, we get asked a lot, you know, where, how do I start, where do I start? And it's hard to give guys advice these days because it's not how it was when, when we started. I mean, I don't want to sound like the, the, the old crabby guy, but I mean, you know, it's a lot different now. I mean, there's a lot of schools out there and a lot of schools available. And when, when guys ask me for advice, I, I usually tell them two things, man. One of two things, either get trained by somebody that was successful and made a lot of money or get trained by somebody that has trained somebody that ended up successful and made a lot of money. If they didn't do those two things, they probably shouldn't be training you. I yep. mean. Yep. Um, <clears throat> uh, for you, Jax, I have on here uh, 14th month uh, championship with the NWA. Um, and then I have you going on to the Ring of Honor. Tell me about the Ring of Honor. Oh man, Ring of Honor is a great company. I mean, they're they're going through some transitions now. Uh, Shane Taylor is their their television champion. He's one of my very best friends in the world. Um, he's out of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I met him through Ray Rowe. Matt Taven is their world champ. He's another guy that I was fortunate enough to wrestle in Japan. Uh, superhuman being as well. Uh, you know, they've got Jay Lethal. They've got Kenny King. They've got the Briscoes. Man, ROH is a. Uh, they've got a hell of a roster. Uh, a great company. Uh, they're paired with New Japan on a lot of events here in the States and overseas. So, I mean, it's a great place to work. They treat their guys well. Um, all the top stars in WWE today all cut their teeth in Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. That's the type of wrestling company this nah. is. I mean, they're the, I mean. Samoa Joe, AJ company. Styles. Okay. I mean, you, you go through the list, huh? That's yeah. where they, they go. Is Ring of Honor an affiliate or owned by WWE? No, no. They're owned by Sinclair Broadcasting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I do see a lot of transition from Ring of Honor or, or association 
uh, and I didn't know what the relationship was. Yeah. Um, so you, you, you both, certainly you have, Jacks traveled quite a bit to Japan. Crimson, is the same can be said for you? No, um, actually never been to Japan. But we're gonna take him there, yeah. and when we do, it's gonna be, um, it, it'll be pretty special, man. I mean, we're, we're chomping at the bits to get to Japan. I've been there, I've, I've seen what they like, I know what they like, and when, and when we turn Crimson loose in Japan, uh, the reaction he'll get over there, it'll be second to none. He'll, he'll be a bigger star in Japan than he was in, in TNA. I mean, that's just what will happen. It's just a matter of time. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Crimson yourself, as I'm looking at your career, is progressing, uh, you know, your return to Impact Wrestling. Tell me about your time with uh, Impact Wrestling uh, and uh, TNA and uh, OVW. Yeah, TNA gave me my start. You know, it was the first wrestling company, I, major company I signed with. Mm -hmm. And they believed in me, gave me a strong run, strong push and you know it was um it was a good few years with them uh unfortunately i i was dealing with some injuries right after i got signed i tore my acl and then shortly thereafter trying to push through that working injured wrestling injured uh, i tore my meniscus in the same knee Ugh. and then I, I dealt with it for you know a substantial amount of time, more time than I should have, mm -hmm. but it was my first real shot, and I, I didn't want to tell. I didn't want to take time off to get surgery because wrestling is constantly evolving, things are constantly changing. The minute you step away, someone is out waiting, of sight, out of mind, waiting man. to take that spot, and you know they've got something to prove, and you know you want to protect that spot if you're in that spot. So I did my best, and eventually it became too much, and I, I needed to take some time off to get to get surgery. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I've had a great relationship with, with TNA, which turned into Impact Wrestling ever ever since that first first contract I signed. I mean, I've, I've been on and off with them, uh, several contracts, uh, working with them without, you know, an extensive contract, like a le term length of time, mm -hmm. or term, I should say, yep. but, you know, still a great relationship with, with them. Um, and we're still doing stuff with yeah, the man. wrestling and TNA to this day. Are they two different associations? No, it's TNA? the same. It's the same company we're talking about. They, they started off as TNA, Total Non-Stop Action. Yeah. They've gone through some brand changes and different things, rebranding, and and it's known as Impact Wrestling today. Okay. So I've been with them through all that transition, and uh, they've been they've been a great home to me. It's, you know, nowadays I've got a lot more experience and knowledge and people around me that you know I, I trust and, and I although you know my time with impact it was always been appreciated and uh, I, I've loved what they they've done for me and launched me they gave me the name crimson and I'll, I, I <laughs> didn't like it at first but now it's grown on me and I'll, I'll take it and <laughs> I took it and um, yeah, I always got love for Impact slash TNA, and uh, it, it was, it was, it was always been good. I mean, there's ups and downs everywhere you work, everywhere you go, sure. whether you're in wrestling or whether you're in any form of uh, other form of entertainment. You, it, it's it's a grind. You know, yeah. you have good days, you have bad days. Yep. But at the end of the day, I appreciate everything they've done for me. Yeah. Do you live in the gym? Are you, can, if I if I come out of here, am I going to find you in the gym? Um, yeah, usually. Usually I, I'm, I stay I stay in the gym, and um, I mean training's always been a staple for me. It's always been, you know, it's not all. It, at first, when I was a young kid, playing sports in high school, you know, that's what got me into the gym. Is it was kind of mandatory. But I've always been a, a tall, lanky, lanky, skinny kid that yeah. wanted to put on muscle yeah. and put on size and. So I started working out and training in the gym as a teenager and just have ever since. Now it's 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 not even, it's just more like. It's part of our identity. Yeah. It's what we are. I mean, we we can't stop working out. That yeah. takes away from what, what we are. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, mm -hmm. you know. Now you'd mentioned Jax, uh, you said five foot tall and 90 pounds. I have a hard time believing either of that. Yeah, well, man, <laughs> yeah, man, my. What's been your training regimen and, and how do I sign up for that? Oh man, you just, you, you eat a lot and you train your ass off. I mean, that's, 
that's uh, that's what you do. I mean, I've been training for 20 years. I love the gym. It's where I'm home. It's where I'm stress free. It's where I can put my headphones on and everything disappears. Relationships, marriages, bad relationships, bad marriages, shit. We can go down the list. I mean, your mom's sick. You can escape it there. That's just an hour of day that I dedicate to myself um, where I don't have distractions. And that's, I owe that to myself. We all owe ourselves the ability to, to find some sanity somewhere and the gym is where I do it. Mm -hmm. um, I can definitely appreciate that. I've been pretty uh, lanky myself. I'm not to your guys' level, but certainly uh, I can appreciate going to the gym and, and uh, building your body and and that's probably a little bit more of my season two will focus on is the mind, body, and soul. Uh, Ring of Honor, Jax, I see here defeating Donovan Dijak. 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 Yeah. Tell me about that. No, man, it was fun. It was um, the first round of their survival of the fittest. It was in San Antonio, Texas. Um, Dijak's a guy I got a lot of respect for. He's in NXT now. Mm -hmm. He's 6'7", six, 6'8", six, probably goes 260 pounds. Um, you know, good guy, big guy, a lot of fun. Again, man, I mean, uh, like Crimson said, Ring of Honor's a great company. A lot of people there have cut their teeth there. We've been really fortunate, Crimson and I have. I mean, uh, aside from WWE, we've been able to work for all of the major companies out there, from Ring of Honor to to um, New Japan to Impact. And it's, um, uh, you know, Ring of Honor's a great company that uh, we would like to work more for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the um, the promotions that you guys have worked for in the last ten years are remarkable. Um, out of a lot of the independent folks that I've sat with, there's very few that have this level of an impressive resume uh, that you guys have springboarded so quickly. Um, what do you attribute that to? Busting your ass. Yeah, but working your ass off. I mean, I mean that's it. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, Crimson said busting your ass. I mean, in this business, it's called professional wrestling. Yeah. And what independent wrestling misses, and this is going to make me sound like a, a total ass, but what it misses is guys that are in shape, yeah. guys that look the part, yeah. guys that study the part, guys yeah. that are passionate, guys that have great gear, yeah. guys that have good boots or, yeah. or whatever you decide to wear. Yeah. You show up on time, you stay late, you, you do your job, you, you do what's asked. It's like any other career, if you're a professional, people are gonna ask you to come work for them. So Crimson and I, man, we, we work hard at being pros. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys don't work hard at being pros. A lot of guys are just happy saying, ah, I wrestle Saturday night, you wanna come watch? Here, buy a ticket. That's not what our goal is. I mean, we, we are professional wrestlers. We want everything that comes along with it, and the good, the bad, and the ugly. So that's why we get used and booked as much as we do, because our gear is second to none. We stay in the gym, we stay in shape, we work on our craft, mm -hmm. and we do what's asked of us. Um, so. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. I mean, it's just it's professional wrestling. I mean, you can't forget the first part of that is it's professionalism. Pros. And we're, we, can't stress it enough. I mean, you, you just gotta you find see it way. now, especially explain it now. Now that you own your own company, how how much of an impact it makes when you get guys that that want to come work for you. The difference between a pro and a guy that just wants to come work. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that that do this as a hobby, and yeah, nothing hobby. wrong with that. You know, everyone needs a hobby, but you know, those aren't. And that's that's where that ends. You know, then there there's pros that that love this industry, that love this business, that eat, sleep, and breathe pro wrestling, and that's all they want to do, and that's all they want to succeed at, and they'll do anything to succeed at that. And that's the level you got to go into this if you want to take it serious, and you are serious about it. And you know, it's just it, it's just everything that he said, and, and and not taking no for an answer, and just being persistent. Not only that, developing a thick skin and being resilient. Yeah. I mean, yeah. because the business will eat you up, uh, chew you up, spit you out. I mean, it'll it'll get the best of you if you let it. But I mean, if, if as long as if this is at the end of the day what you want to do and solely what you want to do, you want to make good money at it. You want to be able to travel the world, and and everything else that comes along with it. I mean, you got to take it seriously. And you know, there's. 
there's there's just not there's there's not many I don't want to say there's not many there's there's a lot of guys that don't and there's a lot of guys that do and you can definitely tell the difference you know and, and that's that's just that's just it just Bros. we conduct ourselves professionally and we're hungry we're still hungry to this day we've been doing it for 10 years now <laughs> and and we're still hungry we still want more not a lot of not everybody has that drive and that determination that passion it's like Road Warrior Animal said earlier. I mean, there's a lot of no's in this business. A lot of doors close. Sometimes you, you second guess what you're doing and am I doing what I should be doing? Am I doing what's right? Um, but you gotta believe in what you do. You gotta stay persistent. You gotta keep moving forward. Because like Crimson said earlier to his point about when his knee was injured and he didn't wanna, somebody's coming for your spot. Everybody, everybody in this business, somebody is coming for where you are. And you, you, you've got to be the hunter, not the hunted. Mm -hmm. I of the tiger, tenacity. I bowled it down years ago when I was, uh, when the economy collapsed and I was having a tough time myself, is what's separating people that are successful from those that are not. Because we all mm -hmm. can have a reason for failure if we, if we want right. to cling to it. Uh, 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 and there's others that no matter what you throw, what dog shit you throw at them, somehow they figure out how to mold it into something wonderful and springboard yeah. from it. Well, and um, it's, it's, uh, you're absolutely, it's easy to be good when you're on top and it's front running. It's hard to be good when you're getting your teeth kicked in and nothing's going your way and there hadn't been a yes and there's not been a door open, but you still gotta get up and go to the gym. You still gotta redefine what you are. Every day you've gotta be working on it, even when it sucks. Yeah. And that's that's what separates people from those that succeed and those that don't. Yeah, I boiled it down to one thing, determination. Yeah. Uh, and that was the only quality I could figure out that separated those that were successful from those that weren't. There were, there were many qualities that would help uh, uh, make make that journey easier. But if you could boil it down to one, that was the only one that I could figure out. And without a doubt, you guys have the tenacity and uh, road warrior animal. I don't know if you use the word tenacity, but it certainly described it of, of what I would consider tenacity. Um, right now, Crimson, are you under contract with anybody? No, I'm not under contract with anybody. So you decided to start your own business. Tell me a little bit about that venture. Uh, yeah, it's always been a goal of mine to, I don't know, leave the business better than I walked into it, I guess. And, and you know, I'm not talking about any, you know, huge accomplishments per se, but just any little difference I can make in a positive direction is, is, is good. And I knew that my area in Tennessee, uh, there was a void. There was a void in good quality wrestling events and there was a void in good quality wrestling schools that taught people how to you know, get into this industry. And I wanted to open a wrestling school and I also wanted to run live events. I was given the opportunity to run a live event before I was able to do this, open the school first, but, you know, it, it um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we, I, I had a good friend of mine who was running local MMA promotions that kind of helped me into that uh, avenue and running live events because I had no previous experience. I knew what it would look like if I ran a live event because I've been to so many that weren't good and you know <laughs> we, we got a lot of experience in what not to do yeah what not to do and you know that's that was kind of the driving factor and like okay well there's let's I mean I want to do this but I want to do something good I want to I want to provide a place that you know my friends or and people that I I think are good in the industry and like, uh, you know, it's not just me making all the decisions. I rely on him a lot. I rely on some other people within my uh, infrastructure to help me make decisions and, you know, who we thought, you know, we wanted to really showcase and put on a platform that we thought they deserved. And, you know, I did my, my damnedest and still do my heart, you know, work my hardest to provide a, a platform on the independence that we can give people. And anyway, I was, uh, I was injured, I was rehabbing uh, from a torn pec repair and down and out, obviously no 
nobody calling, no <laughs> nobody wanting to talk phones about ringing, contracts. Huh? Phones not ringing. You get you get pretty down, especially when you can't. I can't go to the gym. I can't find that escape. I'm laying around all day and, and getting depressed. And it's like, okay, well, listen. Start listening to some motivational speakers and trying to get find that motivation to to do something and. And um, sorry, I'm jumping around a bit, but that's kind of that, that gave me the the idea. Okay, well, I, I live in a pretty big city, uh, the fourth fourth or fifth largest, about to be the fourth largest city in Tennessee, and we're about to surpass Chattanooga pretty soon here. And um, yeah, I knew there was a need for entertainment because we we're outside of Nashville. Nashville gets all the big entertainment right down the road, and we're a big city. We got the four. Um, we got Fort Campbell Army military installation right there. We got Austin Peay State University. We got we got a we got a lot going on, just not a lot of entertainment. And um, you know, we once I figured out like okay how to do it, I had some help getting into it. It was it was it was um, it was a no brainer for me to just continue to pursue it and try and do it and do it well. Uh, it, at, the t at a time in need where, where the phone wasn't ringing and I, I didn't have anything else to do, at, it, it provided me something, something to focus on, something that most importantly kept me in, in wrestling because your in-ring career isn't going to last forever. Yeah. Sometimes it's shorter unexpectedly than, than what you may have imagined and coming off of injury it was like let me figure out what I can do. Um, to stay within this this industry, but yep. you know, make may, may, you know add some longevity to it. You know, let's let's figure out how to do live events. Let's figure out how to produce. Let's 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 just figure out every possible job or avenue or route in pro wrestling and just kind of explore it. And that's what it done. Uh, I've heard other wrestlers describe it as the bump card. Where do you think you guys are in your bump card right now? Well, I don't bump, so <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, everybody, you never know when your last one is. Yeah. I mean, very few guys, I think very few guys get to choose when their last one is. Yeah. Maybe only a handful of dudes get to go out on top like that. Yeah. Um, and it's it's dwindling. Everybody's is dwindling. Yeah. Your body can only withhold so much, withstand so much. But um, I feel as good today as I've ever felt in wrestling. So I mean, I don't want to portray like, oh, yeah, we're yeah. We're, we're, no. we're nowhere near the end. No, you guys look fantastic. Uh, we're, we're nowhere near the end, man. But yeah. bump card, it's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. uh, mine will last forever because I don't bump. <laughs> That's a true statement. <laughs> Vincent, where are you at? Um, I mean, I'm good. I, I, injury, he's doing all the work. That's yeah. where he's at. <laughs> Shit. Injuries happen. You know, yeah. there's some things you just can't prevent that would take you out. But mm -hmm. as far as bumping goes, I mean, I'm, I still I feel great. I, I mean, I feel as as... As I'm getting older, I feel like I feel better, mm -hmm. you know, so. Now, starting your own business, how do you, how do you get finance for that? Where do you come up with the money? Um, you know, do you bring people together? Do you find people that believe in it? Do you, do you sell off, do you a partnership with somebody that can finance it and you run it? Do you have money saved up from your uh, other endeavors? Do you just start small and you big, you build bigger each week. If I'm building a business, you know, without giving me all your formula, how do I go about doing it? Hmm. I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to say I can't give away those secrets. <laughs> but um, you know, ultimately, it's it's just having realistic expectations and being able to manage those expectations. Yeah. A lot of people want to run before they even learn how to crawl. Right. Right. Yeah. So it was a very lengthy process in making sure all the boxes were checked in, in running that first live event. Um, when make, was that? It was um, uh, 2015. 2015 yeah. and I believe it was August 2015 or September 2015. The key is to um, under-promise and over-deliver. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Yeah. I mean, and, and you've got to, from the outside looking in, because I watch him run this business, even though I help him from time to time, is it is a 24 hour seven day a week job for him yeah. there's not a, a minute of the day that goes by 
where he's not working on that. And that doesn't mean he's not physically sitting down working on it, but it's on his brain. Um, brainstorming ideas, coming up with more ways to be successful, ways to reach partnerships within the community. What, what I like from the outside looking in is watching how well he's integrated into the city of Clarksville and becoming a member of that community. He's not just running a live event, he, he's integrating into the community. And that's what's gonna make him successful. I mean, I've wrestled on hundreds of independent events and, and the tried and true in the Wilma Rudolph Center in Clarksville, Tennessee is, the, is by far the premier independent event from production to talent to behind the scenes. It's not, it's funny. I, I describe wrestling, independent wrestling as shows. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear shows, right? You're running yeah. a show. <laughs> a lot of guys are running a show. Uh, tried and true is an event. Yeah. It, it truly is an event. Um, the community comes out for it. The community supports it. And he's worked his ass off um, integrating into the community where he's built a respectable product in a not so respected industry from time to time. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's done a really good job at is building respectability into professional wrestling. And tried and true, uh, if I want tickets, tell me where I can get tickets from. Our website is triedandtruepro.com and um, that's, the, uh, that's, the, that's the, the, the host of everything you need to know whether it's our next live events, buying tickets, the wrestling school that we have, and everything in, in between, our sponsors, our promotional partners, and, and, and that's it. And, um, and, and honestly, you know, if, if there's one bit of advice I could give to anybody that's wanting to, to, to venture into promoting or even opening a wrestling school is, is you gotta treat it like a business. You know, too many people just they're treating it like a hobby, a, a hobby and a and a sideshow carnival act, like it, like where it's of where it's professional wrestling stem from. But in this day and age, you, you got to treat it like a business if you want it to grow and succeed. And that's yeah. all I can I, that's all I can say really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it, our website is in social media, Trident Shoot Pro Wrestling at uh, on Facebook, mm -hmm. and we're on Twitter as well, Trident Shoot Pro, and Instagram at Trident Shoot Pro. And you got a show coming up uh, August tenth, uh, yeah. two thousand nineteen. Yep. And you got I'm look I'm already on your website here, and you got quite a, a roster lined up. Tell me about that. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Man, uh, that's this one thing that he's really well, we've really done it tried and true, is the roster is is, is second to none. I mean, from the from the. Uh, from the everyday talent that we use, the roster guys that. Um, that are on every event to the talent, the attraction talent that he brings in that draws the the casual fan in, the Kevin Nash is the Road Warrior Animal, um, you know, the Tommy Dreamer, those type guys. Um, he, he spares no expense when it comes to creating a roster that's gonna give you professional wrestling. Yeah, there's, 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 no, there's no room, I mean, for, Perception is reality, and if you want to be perceived as a, a company or an organization that is to be taken seriously, then you've got to you've got to build it as that. And you know that's why our roster, when you call it that, is is second to none when it comes to yeah. event by event. I mean, you a lot of got a, you got a lot of local promotions using local guys, and that's you know. There's a place for that. There's a place for There's that, place and it's, for it, uh, you know, it's not, it's not what, what we're trying to do. It's not our vision. And there's an armory down the road in Clarksville that that yeah. uses a bunch of local guys, and you know, they're doing their thing, which is cool. But to me, it's a bunch of hobby guys, you know. And and I, that's that's fine if that's you know that's what they want to do. There's no no harm in that. That's cool. If they're having fun, they're 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 enjoying what they're doing. That's great. But yeah. we talked about it earlier professional that's that's how we want to be perceived as and that's what my brand mm -hmm. that's what I want my brand is perceived as well and I see you guys on the poster I see the war kings on there I see uh, David Kidd cash who I've seen live plenty of times and puts on one hell of a show <laughs> yes yeah. it does uh, I can't tell who those other guys are got yeah, Bram's on there Kevin Nash is on there the yeah. dirty blondes uh, from Major League Wrestling are on there with mm -hmm. Colonel Parker mm -hmm. um, 
uh, you, you know, it's going to be a great event. Yeah, uh, August tenth. I've got. I've already got a. Uh, I've already got a show that I'm covering, or I. I would be there for that one. I got. I think my uncle lives either in Clarksville or really darn close. So. Hmm. Uh, I'll go up to visit him. I'll see when your next show is, and I'll yeah. try to come up there and and show my support as well. Oh, that'd really be great. Be awesome. Love there, to have you. Man. Yeah. Um. Th that's really exciting. Uh, when you start your own business, you're. You're, you believe in yourself, uh, you believe in your talent, and you're, you're putting your neck on the block, uh, chopping block, and you're saying, hey, you know, I can do this, I can do this, I can run with anybody, and I can do it as good, or I can do it better than anybody. Well, that, that's, well, that's an often, often uh, misconception. Okay. Obviously, a lot of uh, people's downfall is trying to compete. It's not okay. a competition. You okay. know, I'm competing with myself to, to, mm -hmm. to learn and grow and be better than the last time I've done, uh, you know, I, I either stepped in the ring or ran an event. And yep. So the only co competitor I have is myself. I'm not, I'm not worried about what they're doing down the street. I'm not worried about yep. what they're doing in Nashville. I don't care, you know. Mm -hmm. If I'm spending energy and time focused on what everyone else is doing, then I'm taking away from my own brand, you know, okay. if that makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's, it's not about doing it better. It's about doing, doing it the best we can, the best we possibly can in, in, in reaching the vision that I have and he has and collectively we have as a brand in reaching that potential. And and the great thing is we don't always agree. Yeah. That's yeah. that's that's what makes this fun. Yeah. Is we don't always agree well, but what we, do you do then? Cuz well, I have a problem with that. Well, uh, we spitball ideas and we usually come to a compromise of some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. Um or usually one of us will will talk the other one into to the vision that they see but but you have to surround yourself with people that will tell you you're wrong yeah you have to because if you surround yourself with people that all they do is tell you you're right then you're not going to get honest feedback um i'll i'll shoot an idea to him he'll be like that's dumb mm -hmm. i mean but we've earned the right to tell each other that because okay. we've been in each other's corner for a couple years now mm -hmm. you, you want that but you also want to be surrounded by the people that you believe and no will give you that honesty, but also have an explanation and be able to analyze it and break it down as to why it's a bad idea or a dumb idea and then offer suggestions on what may be better or work better. And that's the key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't want to, I don't have time for somebody that's going to tell me my ideas are shit and not give me a reason why. <laughs> not, not tell you yeah. how to fix it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, a small example of how that works for us is we were considering bringing in some talent. There was a time span of how long that talent wanted to stay. Yeah. And I said, well, that's two hours. That's only 100 people that can see them in two hours, so you gotta figure how much can you charge each person. Because yeah. you can't get more than 100 people in a two hour window. It's just impossible. Mm -hmm. So can you make your money back on that? Yeah, I mean, can you get the return on investment? The return at the end on of the investment. Day. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, I didn't think about that. I'm glad you spit that out. Mm -hmm. and, you know, And I'll shoot him ideas and he'll be like, man, are you drunk tonight? <laughs> but we, we, we get along great, man. It's what makes the business fun for us now is trying to create not only with the War Kings what we're trying to do, but uh, even with the, the tried and true company is, is how can I best help him and, and be a partner with him on that. It's funny for me, that's the biggest blessing that's come out of us being paired together is, is getting to be a part of tried and true pro. Uh, marketing and marketing your product and marketing all the products that are associated with wrestling, uh, t-shirts, action figures, magazines, um, uh, promotions, uh, commercials. Um, what percentage of that is, is, is your revenue stream generated from and what portion is the direct show? Well, I think they go hand in hand. I mean, you gotta, you can run the best damn event known to man if no one knows about it no one's going to show up no one's going to buy a ticket so um not a lot of people understand that though that are call themselves promoters or and, and you, you have to promote man you you have to and and there's a, there's a there's also a a false sense of security that's created these days with social media as well because right. right. people feel like oh man i'm on facebook i'm on instagram i'm on twitter i'm promoting i'm promoting everyone's paying attention to me yeah everybody's <laughs> paying but 
in reality, th there is a place for that, and that has to be a portion of it. Yeah. But being on the ground, on the street, in the town, in the community, at business functions, at yep. uh, different events, supporting other companies in different um, in, in different forms of in entertainment, you got to do all of that, man. You can't just rely on one stream of, of marketing or promotion, or, or you're going to fail miserably. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it's a large part of. I mean, that's why it's a 24-hour job. It's you know, it's not booking a booking a wrestling show. It's how are we going to get people through the door? How are we going to get more reach? How are we going to get people to just know that we exist in the community? Really focus. Uh, I, I will tell you, you know, one of my secrets, but it's not, you know, it's, it should be common knowledge. But it's we local. I localize the brand. Yeah, yeah. And any growth that we were going to see was going to happen organically through that localization of the brand, right? Uh -huh. So this is Clarksville. This started as Clarksville's wrestling promotion, Clarksville, Tennessee, because it was started there as my hometown. It's where I was stationed in the army. And then whatever happened beyond that, that growth was going to be organic. And I mean, we have the, the platforms now to reach, you know, globally. We have people hitting us up from all over the world, you know, either talent wanting to be a part of the show or fans wanting to see how they can see our stuff. But that all happened organically because all my, all my efforts and focus was, was locally to make sure I had as many people at that live event as possible to make it a great experience for everybody that was involved. Yeah. Are you, are you on Fight TV? Are you on Independent Wrestling TV? Or where, yeah, uh, do, is the only way to see your event buy a ticket, or can I also see you online? No, we can. You got. We have our our events online. So our website always also has our on demand section. Okay. We are also featured on High Spots Network, mm -hmm. which is a they've got a great digital library of uh, wrestling content from many different promotions and organizations. So. Okay. Um, excuse me. We got um. Our stuff's out there, and 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 that's that's actually going to be you know one of the things that we really um, kind of shift focus on is is we think we got a good idea of, of how to how to run a great live event, and then uh, let's let's kind of shift focus a little bit, put a little more energy and efforts towards uh, how do we get it out there? Let's let's get this uh, the digital content, uh, make that a focus for a little bit, and see how we can spread that that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, t-shirts. If I wanted to get your t-shirts, where do I get those from? So I got a great merchandising partner in Territory Wrestling Tees, uh -huh. TerritoryWrestlingTees.com. It's all spelled out. It's, it's a great, and again, uh, it's a local company mm -hmm. out of Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, which works really well for us uh, being paired with those guys, man. I mean, it, it, we get a lot of support from them. Uh, we get to differentiate our product through Territory Wrestling Tees, so it's a uh, and again, just being able to partner with somebody local, that's kind of the feel that we're wanting to have. And if I want to book both of you guys, how do I do that? Uh, Crimson TNA? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I push everybody to him now because I don't have really time to field that stuff much. No, uh, Jack's Dane Info at gmail.com. Uh -huh. Shoot me a message and, uh, you know, we're, we're willing to travel. We're willing to work. Uh, that's how you get to us. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we we handle our own stuff. You know, we, oh, we, yeah. we can do anything. We, we like to do things in-house. So, I mean, it's oh, we handle our own uh, appearances and bookings and stuff like that. But a lot of that goes through him. Um, so, yeah, he, he just a message, and, and we'll respond. We'll go over it. We'll respond and kind of go from there. And then I guess we could also find you on social media and reach out and say, Oh yeah, come be a part of, of uh, what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, we're on all. We're both of us are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, I'm on Twitter at, at Crimson. Uh, Facebook is Official Crimson Army, and uh, Instagram is Official Crimson. Jax, I'm also looking at your uh, your career, and I'm I'm following along. And uh, again, I've got a lot of respect for both of you guys. You guys have accomplished a lot in a very little amount of time. And I'm scratching my head going, how the hell do they do it? And you can bet that I'll go back and I'll listen to this interview several times uh, because there's so much that I get from them. You know what I mean? Um, uh, uh, inspiration, encouragement, uh, and, and listen to this great story along the way. Tell me about, uh, Jax, tell me a little bit about your time at Impact and then going to the uh, Ohio Valley Wrestling and um, and then I guess today you're with um, 
tried and true is that also where we can see you tell me a little bit about those three things and where you're at today oh man well tr tried and true absolutely is my is my home promotion and the one i'm most proud of man because we are so um integrated and involved in in, in its everyday uh, production man so that's that's my most important that's that's <laughs> the one I love the most, I guess you would say. Uh, but Impact was great for me. I mean, it was my first um, opportunity for the world to see me on a national stage, on national TV in the United States. So I'm really grateful for that. I uh, was really lucky that um, I got to be partners with Crimson there and, and rekindle some relationships with some guys that um, that I'd lost touch with along the way. Uh, it allowed me to, to see those guys and be a part of what they're doing again. So nothing but um, uh, crazy respect for Impact and the opportunity they gave me, uh, especially Scott Demore. I'd met Scott over in Japan with New Japan uh, during one of the Wrestle Kingdom shows a few years back. So being able to, to actually work with him and collaborate with him was great. Uh, we got a lot of respect for Scott and what those guys are doing with Impact now. I mean, they're they're still grinding right along, uh, and love working with those guys, um, and, and look forward to working with them in the future. Uh, like Crimson said, the door is still open for us there, and from time to time we we we, we walk through the door for them. Um, going back to OVW was really cool for me because uh, that's where I started. That's where I got trained. Uh, so being able to go back there after 10 years was really, really awesome, man. And um, Al Snow buying that place and and Chad Miller up there from Gladiator Sports, those guys buying OVW, reinvigorating it, really investing money into the setup and the production and, and getting their guys up and running up there. It's been really good for me and Crimson because it lets us get reps in and lets us work together and lets us go work with some kids that, that need – to be brought along and I don't say that in a disrespectful way we all at some point are in a position where we want to work with guys that are a little more experienced than we are and right now for me and Crimson we get to go up there and be the guys that are a little more experienced yeah. so that's a lot of fun for us we get to do some things we never thought we'd get to do uh, with, with OVW and Al being there has, has been really really good for us mm -hmm. on personal and professional levels because Al Snow is a great human being yeah. and uh, he treats us really well both as a person and, and, and as a professional wrestler so I'm really happy to be back with OVW from time to time um, and back on their TV getting opportunities to wrestle in a TV environment is really good uh, wrestling on TV is a lot different than wrestling on a, what they call a house show or a live event mm -hmm. uh, because you have to hit time cues, you have to cut the breaks, there's a lot of things that, that take practice. So being able to do that at Ohio Valley Wrestling. And Ohio Valley Wrestling is actually, correct me if I'm not right on this, but they're one of the only promotions right now other than Raw that are doing live to, mm -hmm. live to broadcast TV in Kentucky, so they're filming live. Yeah. Uh, so there's no edits, there's no retakes, there's no. I mean, you're live to TV up there from time to time. So that's that's great practice for us. I mean, and that's what Al's trying to do. They've gotten um, the school up there accredited, so you can actually take it as a college course now, I believe. Um, broadcasting from behind the scenes to producing to to wrestling. The, uh, I mean, they're really reinventing the wheel up there, and it's kind of cool to be be a part of that on the front end with, with Al and, and Chad and their team. And then, finally, you, you wanted me to wrap up with Tried and True Pro Man. It's the best independent wrestling company in the, in the country, bar none. I mean, I would stack it. Our roster there, our production there, our commentary team there, our logistics and support team there, um, the marketing team there, and the sponsors that are behind us there. I'd put that against any independent... Um, wrestling company in the world. Now, OVW, um, Ohio Valley Wrestling, it looks like you guys became the tag team champions almost a year ago from today. Oh, yeah, man. We were the Southern Tag Team Champs. Those those titles are world-renowned. Uh, I mean, Conway and Dinsmore, Lesnar and Shelton Benjamin, um, the Bashams. I mean, you can go down the list of guys that have been the Southern Tag Team heavy. Uh, 